Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four. Welcome back to summer. Yeah, a little summer in October, yeah, but may, things could get a little bumpy later yeah, today. Yeah, that, that could lead to a bout of severe weather. We'll find out about that in just a minute. But first, here's what's making news on this Wednesday. Flooding waters closed the schools today in Darlington. Keely Arthur is there with a live report. President Trump mocks Christine Blasey Ford during a campaign rally, and today the White House goes on the defense. And phones across the country get the first test of the presidential alarm system. Let's take a look outside today. Right now, it's sunny and very warm. And that's not good. The sun is not good when you get uh, this unstable weather like this. The weather words for today, stormy evening ahead. And Dana is in the backyard weather patio keeping an eye on the radar. Dana. Right now, actually, uh, we're not looking at any sort of rain threat for at least the next few hours. But as you can see behind me, it's very, very windy. We do have a warm front that's lifted right over southern Wisconsin and pushing into central northern Wisconsin right now. That warm front, of course, helping fuel these afternoon temperatures. It does not feel like the beginning of October outside. Up to the northern portion of the state, there is a tornado watch in effect until 11 o'clock this evening. Notice that stark yellow line there slicing through Green Bay. It's not crossing down into our area right now. That doesn't mean we aren't expecting severe weather this evening. They just have a greater chance for uh, some stronger storms compared to what we will see. Still, as Mark mentioned, this heat not good for us for the storm chances coming through later on. We don't have any showers right now. All of that moisture is staying north. We've had a few clouds today, but a lot of sunshine also. And it's hot outside. We're at about uh, 84 degrees in Madison. Again, our average temperature is in the mid 60s. So rather than being that 10 to 15 degrees below average, like what we seen for the last several days. We're instead 20 degrees above average today, all thanks to that warm front. Janesville right now at 88 degrees, and we're going to stay fairly warm for the next several hours compared to this time yesterday. That's an almost 30 degree jump in Janesville. So you're right, it does feel warmer than where we should be at. The storms rumbling through tonight are associated with a cold front, and that cool air arrives very quickly. By tomorrow morning, we'll be back into the upper 40s with high temperatures back below average. This is just a one day warm up for us, but we are in for some very strong storms coming through later this evening. So we'll break down that timing in just a few minutes. Right now, of course, I want to take a look at how things are doing on the roadways. Don't leave your sunglasses at home or in the car. You're going to need them because it's so sunny outside. Dane County is not looking too bad as far as any incidents, not picking up anything. The Beltline eastbound going a little slower, about 16 miles per hour just before John Nolan Drive, and then heading westbound closer to about 28 miles per hour. Down near Verona, both Main Street and 151, smooth sailing. And then as we bounce across town, uh, I or 39 northbound now cleared up. There was an incident there earlier. No uh, hiccups for it right now. Janesville at the Beltline will take about 28 minutes. Middleton, Sauk City about 17. And then downtown to Sun Prairie also about 17 minutes. As you can see here, the wind is picking up. We've had gusts today close to 30 miles per hour. So I'm going to go back in uh, and take a look at what we have ahead throughout the rest of the evening and give you guys that report in just a few minutes. we got to be flirting with a record high here. Yes, very, very close to that. <laughs> All right, well, come on in. We'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Dana. First at four, people in some western counties like Lafayette County are experiencing significant flooding. Darlington schools closed for the day after several roads were shut down. Our Keeley Arthur is there with a closer look. She joins us live. Keeley. Hi there. We are on Main Street right in front of the bridge in Darlington. And look at all of this water. Now the main way to get through the town is impassable and this was a big reason why schools were closed today. Situation not looking good right now. Unfortunately expected to get even worse. Now the Pecatonica River was expected to crest at about 14 feet yesterday. However, it rose to 15.8 feet today and while it's starting to recede just barely, authorities say it will only go back up if the rain forecasted for the rest of the week falls. Thankfully, no injuries to report. And as long as that remains the case, people are enjoying the spectacle, especially the students and staff who got a mid-week break from school. Oh, well, yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> I'm sure all the kids are enjoying it also. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, it's 80 degrees. It's right. Like a little extra day of summer. As you can see from the one playing in the water here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Lafayette County Sheriff Reg Gill says that all the roads expected to flood, like parts of County G and K, have flooded and are now blocked off. So there is some stability here. But I was here reporting on the flooding yesterday, and uh, we used this gas station. Well, not possible anymore. So the situation is completely changing. And with all this wind and this heat, I suspect it will change even more tonight. Back to you. What an unbelievable pictures from Darlington. Keely Arthur reporting live. Thank you, Keely. Election officials are warning tonight about a mailer you might have received related to voting. Its aim is to encourage more people to vote absentee, but the mailer could contain some inaccuracies. Political reporter Jessica Arp is here to explain tonight. Well, yeah, we actually learned about this because of a News 3 viewer who, after getting the mailer this week, realized some of her information was printed incorrectly and directed, to re and directed her to request a ballot from the wrong village. Nancy Warner got a letter this week from a group called the Center for Voter Information. An address indicates the letter was sent from Regent Street. One immediate red flag is that her name included two middle names that weren't hers. And when she looked at the absentee ballot request form, the letter asked her to send in this Oregon resident was directed to send it to Prairie du Sac. I'm concerned that it's sending me an application to vote in Prairie du Sac when I've never lived in Prairie du Sac. Um, and it lists my residence address as Oregon. I, it was totally, <laughs> didn't make any sense. Now, we reached out to the State Elections Commission about this. A spokesman said while the absentee ballot form is legitimate and would lead to a ballot if the information is filled out correctly, they're warning voters not to trust third-party group forms and instead request one from their local clerk or the myvote.wi.gov website. We did reach out to this group, which is a 501c4 that's actually based in Washington, D.C. Their program director said in a statement they are a nonprofit, nonpartisan group trying to encourage voting, and they sent 270,000 of these across Wisconsin this week in a statement they did not address the possible inaccuracies in these mailers. We also know this isn't just happening here. You do a search online and there was a story this week in Minneapolis. There's stories in Iowa and Kansas. They've sent these out all over the country and in some cases they're being sent in to the right place and they might actually result in an absentee ballot, but you really need to check the information on it. So, so the yeah. best thing is if you're going to want to vote absentee, call the clerk. You should, or you can actually, if you go to that myvote.wi.gov website, you can go right there and click and they will send you one. So there's easier ways to do this and essentially the Elections Commission is saying the only people that you can absolutely definitely trust to get you these, this information correctly is your municipal clerk or that vote website that is theirs. Not unsolicited mail. That's correct. Yeah. All right, Jess, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jess. The White House defended President Trump's comments about one of the women accusing Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault, but his statements have drawn criticism from key senators who could decide Kavanaugh's fate. Nicole Killian has more from Capitol Hill. <laughs> The White House is pushing back on questions of whether it is blocking the FBI from interviewing Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, the woman accusing Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh of attempting to sexually assault her at a party when both were teenagers. The president's indicated uh, that whoever the FBI deems necessary to interview, he's fine with that. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders defended the president after he mocked Dr. Blasey at a Mississippi rally last night. How did you get home? I don't remember. How'd you get there? I don't remember. Where is the place? I don't remember. He was stating facts that were given during Dr. Ford's testimony. The president's speech brought on criticism from some lawmakers, including undecided Republicans Jeff Flake and Susan Collins. As the countdown to a possible Friday vote on Kavanaugh's nomination continues, anti-Kavanaugh protesters have confronted senators in the Capitol hallways and in their private lives, prompting a warning from the majority leader on the Senate floor. There is no chance in the world they're going to scare us out of doing our duty. The White House dodged questions of whether the FBI report should be made public. Senator McConnell so far says only senators will see the report, despite calls from Democrats to release a redacted version. In Washington, Nicole Killian for WISC News 3. 
The FBI supplemental background check could be completed as soon as later today. The New York State Tax Department says it is looking into a report in the New York Times about President Trump's finances. The report is challenging Trump's often repeated claim that he took a loan of $1 million from his father and became a self-made billionaire. According to a New York Times investigation, the president was given or inherited the equivalent of $413 million from his father's real estate empire. Much of that wealth came from what the Times calls dubious tax schemes, including setting up a sham corporation to disguise gifts from their parents. The Times estimates the Trump family avoided paying $550 million in gift and inheritance taxes. In a tweet this morning, President Trump slammed the Times for doing an old, boring, and often told piece on me totally false attack based on an old recycled news story. The Times says it reviewed 100,000 financial documents, including confidential tax returns for its report. If the allegations are proven true, the president could potentially face civil fines for tax fraud. First Lady Melania Trump is on her first solo foreign tour, touring four countries in Africa. Mrs. Trump arrived on her outreach to Africa as part of her Be Best campaign, which is aimed at children. She was welcomed to Ghana in colorful style and greeted by the country's First Lady, Rebecca Akofu Addo. The First Lady Lady will also visit Malawi, Kenya, and Egypt over the next few days. Well, if you have a cell phone or another mobile device, it probably vibrated or started buzzing this afternoon as the federal government is testing presidential alerts for the first time. At 1.18 p.m. our time, you should have gotten this message on your screen saying this is a test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. A few minutes later, the message was on TVs and radios. There's no need to panic. This alert cannot be turned off. And with good reason, it's designed to warn you of a real emergency like a terror attack or a widespread natural disaster. It's meant to make sure that people have information that they need in an emergency so that they can stay safe and that they can act to protect themselves, their loved ones, their property. So it's very important to make sure that those systems are working as planned and as needed so that when we need them, we know they're going to be there. Wisconsin Emergency Management says there are a number of checks to make sure that the alert does not go off automatically here. We talked to some people in Madison about whether or not they were expecting that alert today, and you can hear from them tonight on News 3 at 5. I didn't get it on my phone today. I did. I think maybe that's why it's a test. It's, <laughs> There's some kinks there that need to be worked some. out. Yeah. Do you like bacon? Yeah, who doesn't? Well, you should cut back on it. <laughs> well, I'm hard. not a big bacon eater. <laughs> I don't eat it every day. There's some warnings about processed red meat. We'll talk about that when Live at Four continues. <laughs>
Well, more evidence that cutting out processed red meat is best for your health. New research shows a link between things like bacon and sausage and breast cancer risk. Robert Gray has more. Angela Thomas was diagnosed with breast cancer two years ago. The 34-year-old is now cancer-free and says she's made major lifestyle changes. After my diagnosis, um, it was more of a priority to start incorporating more greens with every meal. Um, I kind of started to cut out all um, processed meat. New research in the International Journal of Cancer looks at 15 previous studies and finds eating processed meats is associated with a nearly 10% higher breast cancer risk. When we look at the evidence altogether, is that there's a increased risk for breast cancer with high consumption of processed meats. Processed meats like bacon, ham, sausage, and deli meats, including turkey, are altered to improve flavor and preservation. In 2015, the World Health Organization classified processed meat as a carcinogen because studies show it can increase risk for colorectal and potentially stomach cancers. Study author Dr. Mariana Stern at USC's Keck School of Medicine says avoiding processed meats is key and red meat should be limited to about 18 ounces per week. To limit the consumption of alcohol and to uh, increase the consumption of fruits and vegetables. You eat Angela grew up in Louisiana eating a meat-heavy diet. She's now trying to convince friends and family to make changes. You know, once you get new information and knowledge, you want to share so that you're not doing the journey alone. Angela hopes her choices will keep her cancer from coming back. Robert Gray, CBS News, Los Angeles. And the American Cancer Society recommends physical activity at least 30 minutes per day for breast cancer prevention. Good information. Well, stocks gained ground on Wall Street, setting another record for the Dow Industrials. The blue chip index added 54 points, closing at 26,828. The Nasdaq Composite Index up 25, and the S&P 500 gained 2. Well, Alzheimer's disease can be frightening, mysterious, and daunting. There are still a lot of unknowns about this disease, which affects more than 5 million Americans. Madison's annual Walk to End Alzheimer's is this weekend at Madison Memorial High School. Hannah Maronk is the Community Engagement Manager at the Alzheimer's Association, and Catherine Singh is the co-chair of the Walk. Welcome to you Welcome, both. Ladies. Thank you. Catherine, you have a very personal connection yes. to this disease. Tell us about that. My mother was diagnosed at the the age of 68 two years ago. Uh, I relocated back from where I was living in Seattle to be here, to be closer, um, and became a committee member, co-chair last year, did my first walk, um, was supported by not only the association but friends and family, so looking forward to Sunday where uh, we have a big group and uh, have raised a lot of money, so it's, it's exciting to see that um, even in hard time, there's a lot of love surrounding this, us. This is a very hard disease to deal with, I would imagine. It is. My mom doesn't know what day it is, um, has lack of vocabulary, which is where she first noticed it in about 2011. So, so there, were, there are warning signs. What yeah. Should, what should people look for? Um, I think the biggest thing is the short-term memory um, and then just, you know, getting the regular checks with your doctors. Um, it, it's often detected first on paper. It's not really something that they can just do a blood test for, so that makes it a little more difficult, but um, as long as you're trying your best to get ahead of it and then taking care of the best you can. Hannah, sadly, this is one of those things where almost everyone you know has a connection to this or a story to share. Yeah. So what is the goal of the walk? Um, so the goal is obviously to raise funds and awareness, just that the Alzheimer's Association is here in Madison and the surrounding communities to help and offer local care and support programs as well as funding research. And there's no cure right now. Mm -mm. It's, no. just, it's just a degenerative disease? Yeah, so um, at the walk we always encourage people to join us and we will have one flower that'll be a white flower and that represents our um, first survivor. Oh, well it's always, I think, and you probably have had this experience, that there is, there is some benefit to knowing that you're not alone. It doesn't make your personal situation any easier, but you see that there are so many people that are on this journey with you. That, that's got to be inspiring. Absolutely, and I think the walk day, I mean, we gather over a thousand people that come throughout Dane County and they come together, and a lot of them are caregivers and people like Catherine that feel like they're not alone that day, and they, they 
then learn about support groups. So after the walk, we see our support group attendance go up and things of that sort. So it's just a great day for us to raise awareness and gather people together to, so to it's fight. A, so its effects continue all year long. Yeah, absolutely. And it must feel good to know that they're, to have that support. Absolutely. And meeting people in similar scenarios with their own moms and family members and getting tips and tricks from the support group. And sadly, the stories are pretty similar, I would imagine. They are, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you got almost a thousand people coming. Yes, yeah, I think we're just at like 900 and people are able to come and join us and register the morning of. We have registration from 8.30 until about 9.45 and then we'll do our Promise Garden ceremony at 10 a.m. and the walk will begin shortly after that. So it's a great day and we hope people will join us. What is the Promise Garden ceremony? So the Promise Garden ceremony is the opportunity for um, people to talk on behalf. People like Catherine would be able to share her story and say, you know, you're not alone in this fight. Seek help, seek resources so that you don't feel alone. And we also have um, support groups for people living with dementia and Alzheimer's as well. So it's just a great day and we're super excited and fingers crossed that the weather, the rain yes. stays away. Yes. <laughs> There's registration if you're not registered at 8.30. Go to Mansfield Stadium over at Memorial High School. The walk begins at 10.15 and our very own Eric Franke will be there to yes. send off the runners bright and early Sunday morning. Yes. ALZ.org for more information. Have a great event. Catherine, best of, best of luck to your Thank mom. You. Thanks for being with it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, eSports is a form of, of competition between players and teams using video games. Its popularity is growing, especially on college campuses, but some critics are worried about the addictive nature of those games. We'll find out why coming up after Dana's forecast.
Take a look at this. Video captured two toddlers attending a Halloween themed party at Disneyland <laughs> yeah. dressed up as Slinky Dog from the film Toy Story. That is brilliant. The adorable pair walked around Anaheim, California with one taking the lead as the dog's head and one behind as its oh, tail. That is just we gotta get priceless. We've got to get a view of the bear. And the, the tail <laughs> fell down there. There goes the tail. And then the mom was in the back and she was oh, the girl cowgirl. Yeah. The cowgirl's name. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was a family outfit. I like it. So there you go. So creative. Halloween costume oh, idea. I like that time of the year. It's Wednesday, October 3rd, believe it or not. Alrighty, And it's look at the leaves day. I saw them flying by today. Yes. Blowing. Uh, there's a live look for you right now. Oh, a little the, bit of color. Yeah, starting to change. Oh, well, that's very pretty. pretty. Is that Langdon Street? Okay, yeah, downtown on campus. It's also National Techies Day. Where would we be without them? In the dark. Yes. Yeah. And it's National Pumpkin Seed Day. People eating pumpkin seeds can be dated back to 7,000 B.C. in Mexico. The Aztecs and Mayans revered pumpkin seeds, and why not? They're one of the most nutritious plant-based foods. They're full of zinc and iron. Here you go. We ounce for ounce, they have two and a half times the protein as a hard-boiled egg. Mm -hmm. You know that? They're one of my favorite road trip snacks. Pumpkin seeds and, and these are really good. Are they flavored or just roasted? No, just roasted. Ooh. A little salt, not too much. Yeah, they get a little healthy snack. I like it. I like it. What are the, what are the, the, the shelled ones called? Pepitos or... Pup, uh, but those are are those yeah pepitos. But are those pumpkin seeds? I thought those were a different kind of seed. Oh, when they're when they're sh like shucked, when they're unshelled. Uh, unshelled. Okay. unshelled. There they're you unshelled. go. Yeah, these are great. These are good for the car. Uh, yeah. Great in sunflower seeds because you don't have to spit out the thing. Exactly. Exactly. I try not to um, <laughs> minimal mess kind of food. It's right. my thing for that. All right. Well, we'll be snacking and watching the storms coming in. That's the game plan for this evening. We do have a pretty strong line of showers and thunderstorms sliding through later on today. Even though right now it is mostly clear. We'll take a look at your forecast right after the break.
We are looking at the potential for some stronger thunderstorms to move through over the next few hours. In fact, we have a tornado watch right now for the northern portion of the state. A few severe thunderstorm warnings up there as well. For the central and southern side of Wisconsin, though, uh, no watches or warnings for us yet right now. Our storm coverage will start up uh, in a few hours. We're going to wait a little longer before we have that line slide on through. No rain for us currently. A lot of sun outside and it is warm for us as a warm front has lifted right over the area. We have a cold front off to the west that is going to swing through overnight. That's the driving force behind the showers that we're going to see later on today. And behind that front, much cooler air arrives. This is the only day that we're expecting to stay this warm. That front just sliding right over Wisconsin over the last several hours. And we're near record breaking temps for us today, even though it's the beginning of October feels a little more like the end of August for us. So we have sun right now. We'll stay in the 80s for the next few hours. Showers and storms to the north until we get a little closer to about 7 o'clock. And that's when our line of showers is going to slowly start to enter, enter central Wisconsin. And then we are expecting scattered showers and a few isolated thunderstorms late in the evening and towards midnight. The good news for us as these storms have traveled east, they've weakened quite a bit. Not willing out the chance to see some very heavy rainfall or even some hail. But that line of storms is going to be weaker coming through at 1030 as opposed to coming through at 5 o'clock in the evening when we have all that sun and that warm air in place. Throughout the early, early morning, those showers sliding through fast. They're out of here by about 1 o'clock. The clouds leave along with them. And we're looking at a mostly clear sky to start off the day and some sunshine for our Thursday afternoon. Even temperatures will be much cooler below average for our Thursday highs with sun for us. That breeze coming from the northeast later in the afternoon. And then by Friday morning, clouds building back in yet again, and we are looking at the chance for scattered showers and some heavy rainfall throughout the day on Friday, uh, not just an isolated line. As the line comes through very quickly, we aren't expecting a major rainfall event. Rainfall totals will stay close to just a few tenths of an inch for us throughout much of southern Wisconsin. Uh, some isolated areas could get just a little over a quarter of an inch of rainfall, but again, not expecting major rain force. Wind gusts, though, they could pick up quite a bit later on this afternoon and evening. Could see wind gusts up to about 36 miles an hour in Madison. I saw some reports getting a little closer to 40 or even 42 miles an hour. Certainly possible for us with that line coming on through the ground already super saturated. So we do have a slight risk for severe weather for southern Wisconsin and to the north under that enhanced risk. Notice that pretty much lines up with where the tornado watch is right now. They're dealing with the storms currently when we're dealing with the heat of the day, so they have a chance to see some stronger thunderstorms and also the potential for an isolated tornado. Not going to rule that out for us. We're more concerned about brief heavy rain, those wind gusts, and also the potential for some hail. Because of this, we still have an alert day in effect through this evening and overnight because of the severe thunderstorms. Any brief rainfall possible, but uh, it'll be pretty quick with that line sliding on through. Right now, we have some nice color outside, as you just saw, a little red at the top of the trees. We're not quite at peak just yet. We're going to wait until we get a little later in October towards the uh, end of the month. That's when we'll start to really hit our peak colors. So we're sitting at 84 right now. Our record is 85. So we are right there flirting with the line over the next hour. We may hop right over it for Madison, but for Janesville, we're a little closer, about 88 currently. So we are looking at a, a pretty humid afternoon as well. Again, our heat index closer to 86 when you factor in that humidity. Over the next several hours, our temps hold steady and then drop significantly, very rapidly after that cold front swings on through. We'll have a cool start to tomorrow morning. Overnight lows in the mid to low 40s for us. Again, gusty conditions as the front comes in. Tomorrow afternoon highs will be in the mid 50s. We're looking at a high of about 56 under a mostly sunny sky, a little breezy. Uh, but a little more comfortable for those of us who enjoy the cooler weather. We see sun during the day and then clouds building in with showers overnight. Overnight lows will be back in the 40s as we head into Friday. Friday, we are looking at showers and thunderstorms yet again. Become a little more seasonal, a little warmer into the mid to low 60s for our Saturday high showers, both Saturday and Sunday on and off again. Uh, so if you have any plans, my recommendation at this point, don't cancel them for the weekend. But if you download the weather app, you have the radar in hand. You can check real quick if there are showers near your area or if you just need to wait an hour or two before you head outside. Warm start to next week. Uh, we'll be back into the 70s for us and the showers linger through the middle of next week for us. Just a, a soggy, saturated start hmm. to October. I know. So enjoy the sunshine tomorrow. <laughs> a 30 degree drop tomorrow. Yeah, Correct. Wow. Yes, a, a 20 degree warm up today, almost a 30 degree warm up for some areas today, and then we drop right back down. 
Fronts are magical. Yes, they are, <laughs> especially this time of year. Yes, Keep yes, an eye on things tonight, yes, though. Yes, All right, Dana, thank you. Thank you, Dana. Colleges nationwide are spending millions of dollars developing e-sport video game programs and teams. Students say it helps them pursue careers in coding and video game design, but critics worry about the addictive nature of the games. Esports have exploded in popularity on college campuses all across the nation. There's even a Madison Esports Club on campus. To learn more about the impact, researchers at Ohio State University are wiring esport athletes up, performing EEGs and stress tests to find out what's happening during gaming. We see some of their stress levels go up a little higher. Uh, we see their heart rates get up a little bit higher. And psychologists say high school students who suffer from anxiety, depression, learning disorders, or have a hard time turning the game off are most at risk in college. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Still ahead tonight at four. What's for dinner tonight? Well, if you like a lot of people, it might be fast food. America is a fast food nation. I'm Meg Oliver with just how many adults and kids are eating fast food on a regular basis. Her, trying to keep Barrett cool. at the Henry Vila Zoo. Trying to keep cool on this near record setting heat in October. Oh, it's a hot day for her. Yeah, she'll she'll get her due soon. <laughs> well, America loves fast food. Just how much, you ask? Meg Oliver reports on a new study that reveals just how often we eat fast food. Thank you, sir. Stephen Chrisamalas has been serving up piping hot burgers and fresh cut fries for close to a decade. The owner of Steve's Burgers in New Jersey says business is booming. How has business been in the last year? 
Last year has been the best year so far. Really? Really. A new report from the Centers for Disease Control shows about a third of American adults eat fast food on any given day. Prior research found around 40% of the money families spend on food is for eating out. Fast food consumption has been a part of the American diet for a while. Kirsten Herrick is one of the study's researchers. With today's busy lifestyle, fast food is an easy option that many people choose. This is for you, sir. The report says men are more likely than women to buy fast food at lunch. Uber driver Sam Bracero tries to eat healthy, but every so often indulges in a cheeseburger. When we're happy, we eat. When we're sad, we eat. Another recent study found children are eating fast food more frequently. Oh, so delicious. Stephanie Canzani has a five-year-old daughter and a newborn son. They try to eat at home, but she says convenience is a driving force between many dinner choices. I think it's a time thing, a convenience thing, not having to take all the steps to cook at home. It makes it uh, approachable and easy to feed on the go. And that's a major reason why Steve's Burgers and other fast food restaurants are seeing increasing sales. Meg Oliver, CBS News, Garfield, New Jersey. The study shows that younger people are more likely than older people to eat fast food on a daily basis. I only do it if I'm like on the road. Right. Traveling. Same with me. I, I don't, don't eat it very often no, at all. But do. my college kid, I'm sure, does every day. <laughs> I actually don't want to know how much he he's might make eating. up for our <laughs> lack of going. Yeah. Well, speaking of eating, this is a little different than fast food. It's been a Madison dining destination for half a century. Fifty years at fifty years of age, Portobello is still going strong. We'll find out how in this month's Tastemaker segment that's coming up next at 4.
As far as traffic is concerned, it is a little windy outside right now. We're looking at uh, a little bit of a gusty afternoon for us. Looking at 12 right at John Nolan. You can see traffic moving a little slower. The camera's shaking though. Um, partially because of the wind currently. As we look at the belt line, uh, do notice all that red. We actually have three accidents on the eastbound side right now. One, two, three all lined up. Uh, not seeing any major delays are backed up. The one close to a fish hatchery road does have the right lane blocked right now. But again, those three accidents have speeds reduced quite a bit. Eastbound 25 miles an hour, 14 miles an hour, and then 17 miles an hour. The closer you get to John Nolan Drive, westbound side about 27. So that's the usual speeds that we'll see at this time a little slower. Uh, things will clear out here in about 30 minutes or so. Middleton, a little slow downtown, but no delays or accidents. If you're traveling from Verona towards the Beltline, it should take you about five minutes. Oregon to the Beltline, about 17, and then Springfield to University Avenue, about five minutes. That's a quick look at traffic. I'll send it back over to you. All right, be careful out there. Thank you, Dana. Well, the FAA is investigating an incident in Pennsylvania where state police used a helicopter to break up a group of rowdy tailgaters. Police say fans were, quote, getting out of hand outside Penn State's Beaver Stadium and refused to leave, so they sent in a low-flying helicopter to interrupt their fun, but things did not go as planned. Tent poles, tarps, and debris became airborne, injuring at least one person. The state police said the chopper was deployed simply as a tool to curb dangerous behavior, kind of like fighting danger with more danger. Whoa, yeah. Uh, uh, not a good idea. Wow. Well, one of Madison's longest lasting restaurants, Portabella, has provided a slice of Italy in the Midwest since 1968. 50 years later, it is still an iconic eatery. Madison Magazine's Andrea Bailing, Bailing checked out checked out Portobello for this month's Tastemaker. We're here in the banquet room at Portobello with one of the owners, Ed Shinnick. Thanks for having us today. Oh, thank you for having us. Can you tell me what we have on the table here? Uh, we have four different items. We'll start with the appetizer. There's stuffed mushrooms, and there's Italian meats and cheeses, peppers, onions. And what's this dish here? This dish is a beef and portobello mushrooms over pasta with a gorgonzola sauce. Oh, yum. That's delicious. And this is a shrimp dish? This is a shrimp, and a peppered shrimp alfredo. So it's pepper, uh, red peppers, shrimp, portobello mushrooms, and then alfredo sauce. Do, do portobello mushrooms show up a lot on your menu? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> um, and then we have our trademark portobello salad. An iconic Madison dish here. Yes. And has the menu changed a lot since you've opened? Huge. Huge. We've went from a two-page menu to an eight-page menu. Wow. A, a lot of uh, items we have now, we've kind of combined recipes from the Green Bush. Our original partner's wife was Rose, Rose Troya, and Troya was one of the restaurant families in the 60s and 70s. Uh, so a lot of her recipes were incorporated into this. We've also incorporated recipes I found while in my travels in Italy. We have a sister city, Mantova, and uh, I've had the opportunity to be in their restaurants, in their kitchens, and I've learned a lot of different unique cooking methods. And and I wanted to talk too about this portrait behind us. You took okay. this picture, is that right? I took that picture oh probably ten years ago. Um, it's our sister city, or sitting on their bridge entering the city, a lot like our John Nolan Drive. Well, this place opened in 1968, but you knew this place even before then as coming here as a kid, right? Yeah, I started going to Paisans probably in the 50s. And so yes, I'm very old. <laughs> How did you start working here? By fluke. Fluke? Really. So a friend of mine was working here. We were in high school at the time. A friend of mine was working here. and. He broke his leg, broke his ankle, and so I needed a job. And so I came in here, and Roy McCormick was the original, our original partner. And I went up to Roy. I said, Roy, I need a job. And he went, can you work Friday and Saturday? I said, yes. He said, well, I'll see you Friday. <laughs> Easiest interview. That was a very easy interview. <laughs> Looking back now, it, can you, did you think that you'd be where you are today, running Portobello for over 50 years? No, not initially. No. no, I just, I started out in college with an, with accounting program and labor management programs and 
then it just kind of grew on me and you can use those things today in what we do, but um, it wasn't my intention. Well, this is such a gem in Madison. Thank you You're for welcome. it. Boy, yeah. Jim is right. Now we're hungry, aren't yeah, we? beautiful. You know, when I was in college, whenever my parents came down, they take me out to dinner. That's where we That's went. That's where we went. I yeah. still love it, too. Yeah, yeah should, I the institution. That. Didn't we go there once? We did. You and I? Yes, we did. We yeah. were going to say, oh, we went to a play. That's right, at Overture. That's right. We had the portobello salad. I'm still, <laughs> now I'm dreaming about it. All right, I know where I'm going this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Andrea. We'll be right back with a final check of your forecast. Actually, check out this month's Madison Magazine for more about all of this, and we'll be right back. Keeping an eye on the radar this evening. Absolutely. So we do have the chance for some very strong thunderstorms to roll through this evening. Because of this, we have an alert day for the evening overnight. Severe thunderstorms coming through later on. We still got a few more hours. If you're getting ready to grill out for dinner, you're good to go. But some high winds and hail and brief heavy rainfall certainly possible with that line of storms coming through later on this evening. Tomorrow, though, much, much cooler outside with sunshine. Those storms associated with the cold front. And as you can see, uh, the cooler air will certainly shift in for our Thursday. And the last dry day for quite some time. Correct, correct. Right, showers build in right again Thursday evening, and then uh, as we head into the weekend, they're back and they're staying. Right. Keep it right here this evening. Yes. Thank you, Dana. Thanks, Dana. We'll be right back.
Well, in today's final touch, it's a far cry from a fairy tale <laughs> stagecoach. Nonetheless, pumpkin paddle boats are making.